Welcome everyone to the maker side of the Manor and Maker brand. For those who are new here, we live in a chateau in France and we posted some videos before of us moving in and what it's been like for the first couple of months here. And now for those who have followed along on that journey, we're gonna branch off and try a couple of different type of videos where we introduce the maker side of things. Yeah, I think because both of us are makers ourselves, um, I'm a painter. Uh, and Sarah is a uh, loves to sew and is into historical costuming. We're going to start showing you a bit more about uh, us making things, um, and we we also plan on inviting other people to come and join us and and uh, create stuff. Everything from you know artists and and sewers to uh, costumers to anybody who's got an an interesting geeky passion that they really want to want to explore and bring their people together. That's what we in, intend to do here. Yeah. So the next couple of videos will be introducing some things I've done related to sewing. One is the antique sewing machine that I bought. And the other one is a dress I made for the Costume Industry Coalition support. So this intro will serve for both of those. So apologies if you've seen one already and are seeing this again, but stay tuned, something different's coming up. And then we'll start branching out and we'll talk about our sewing room and as we get the studio set up and things like that and dig into the maker side. Exactly. So follow along. Uh, thank you for following so far if you have done so already and welcome to Manor and Maker if you're new here. And welcome to the maker particularly. <laughs> we, welcome, we welcome you here and we, we hope that you'll join us as we uh, explore our life in France and our love of this new chateau. This is about my make of the Mrs. Maisel dress, and I find it helpful when people level set, so here we go. I am formerly IT, and I've been into sewing as a hobby for a few years. I have made clothes before, but I'm by no means technical, and everything I know is self-taught. I really enjoyed making this dress. Every project is a chance to learn something new, so let's get into how I did it. Every Thursday in our little town in France, there is a market and one week there was some really beautiful French blue linen in a color I couldn't resist. So all I needed was a project. It was about the time the Mrs. Maisel pattern was released by the costume industry. So I downloaded that, got out my scissors and glue and started crafting. It went together really easily. The instructions were easy to follow and I was able to piece it all together and start tracing out the individual pieces. And that was fine. Uh, I found the only thing I missed the actual pleating pattern lines on the skirt. I found this out by doing a mock-up for this project, which I found really helpful. There are a couple of things that were a stretch for my skill set and a couple of things I had missed in tracing the pattern. And it really helped me figure that out. I didn't pick the right size to download, so I had to take a few inches out the back, but it worked out generally okay. I'd like to do more research in the future on actually correctly downsizing a pattern. After much debate, I decided to interface the bodice pieces to give them more structure, but leave the skirt free flowing. I thread marked all the notches and other markings on the pattern, and then I stay stitched and clipped as per the instructions. I didn't have enough material on piece K from the width of the material that I was using, so I just marked on the pattern where I ran out and then cut a corresponding piece and attached it in to basically fill in using the standard historical methods. Then I decided I would line both the skirt and the bodice with Cupro as the linen was a fairly loose weave. Cupro is pretty slippery to work with, so there was a lot of pinning and marking of the pieces to make sure that they came out the right size. And then again, because it's slippery, I flatlined those into all the pieces of the pattern before actually beginning work on the construction. If you're using the lining, be sure to fold the pattern pieces in when you're cutting out the lining like I did with the Cupro here. And you'll probably want to take a couple of inches off the bottom as well. I think I took about six inches off the bottom of mine to make sure that it doesn't show past the bottom of your dress once it's hemmed. The trickiest part of the pattern for me for sure was this shoulder seam. I don't know why it took me forever to figure it out, but it did. And making sure everything was marked correctly is key to this piece. 
As mentioned, I found the shoulder and sleeve piece the hardest to figure out. I don't know why my brain couldn't get it. Anyways, if you're having the same problem, make sure that your notches are at the top and that the part that you've thread clipped is actually the one joining to the top piece of the bodice. Don't know why I found this so non-intuitive and I'm sure others won't have this problem. This is piece C laid out as it will be when it joins to the bodice. Here it is right sides together pinned in the position that it should be. So again, you can see where the clipping mark is and how it's inverted and how the notches are now down along the bottom edge. I was really pretty impressed with how my antique sewing machine was able to do the top stitching fairly accurately and within the line that I wanted it to. It's my first time using the antique sewing machine that I just restored. And so to get this level of accuracy, I was really pretty impressed. Here's a not great view of the two shoulder seam pieces. The one on top is obviously wrong sides together. The one underneath is still right sides together. And then I assembled pieces G and H to do the facing. And this is how these should look when they're correctly positioned. Not that it took me three tries to get those. And then once they're actually seamed and pressed open. I found these facing pieces didn't quite work out the way they should for me. And it was probably because of the way I sized down the pattern, but the notches didn't really line up and there ended up being a lot of overhang, which was expected the way I had done the resize. So just to kind of show you that I basically pinned it at the seams and measured everything out from there and just let it line up as it would. I didn't worry about the notches as much. And here's the facing attached. Uh, again, my new old antique sewing machine did a pretty good job of top stitching along there. I had to hand sew it down because either I missed the finishing instructions or there weren't any and that piece was a little bit floppy for me. My underarm seam almost lined up. No matter how I try, I always seem to just not quite have it perfectly aligned. And we're back to the trickiest piece again. So you can see when I had it together, things did not line up. I think this is because I was thinking about seam allowance and not just joining between the dots as the instructions provided. So basically I was unhappy with how this join figured out and it's this pivot point that really is the key to this whole dress, I think, is getting that pivot point correct. So I wasn't happy with it on either side and partly it's due to the strength of the stitching on the antique machine and partly me doing this using the seam allowance instead of the actual instructions. So I took those two pieces out, basted where the stitching line was going to be, and I restitched the whole thing basically back the way it should be, which was a little bit of rework, but worth it, I think, for the final effort. And here it is refinished, and as you can see, it looks a lot tidier. It came out a lot nicer. There's a little pucker in the corner there that I would do better on my next one, but I'm really glad I put in the rework of joining that up. Key to this bit was to get the points lined up correctly, and I had to use the line up against a grid. And then I pinned this first pin to get the center point. And then I matched up the bottom and then I pinned everything else. And that was how I made sure that these two would come out evenly on top. Doing the mock-up and practicing helped me get the pinning and stitching in the ditch just right for the bodice. I used the recommended towel method to do the pressing on the linen. Uh, and of course on linen, I was trying to do wrong side pressing as much as possible to avoid getting any shininess and doing it with the towel worked out pretty well. The pockets, I was so chuffed about how the pockets came out. This is my first time really incorporating them into a skirt properly. So I was a little bit nervous. I chose to use the Cupro so that they wouldn't be too bulky and I am thrilled with how they worked. It really helped to just pin the bulk of the pocket out of the way as I was sewing the lining into place and sewing the two sides together, so I recommend that. My antique sewer did the 99% of the work, and I used nearly an entire spool of thread to get this done. My sewing equipment arrived, and I was able to use my mannequin to get the hem just right, and it was a bit of a rush hand hemming to get it done before the first party that I wanted to wear it to. So here it is, rather inelegantly draped on my mannequin. Um, I didn't have time to make the belt or the correct materials. I'm in an area where it's a little trickier to get 
complex interfacings and I forgot to get some when I was in Paris. So I chose just to use a belt that I have on hand, which isn't ideal. It's a belt for jeans, but it has some embroidery that matches in the same color. So it worked out all right. I'm not sure if it was the linen or the way I downsized the pattern, but there was a little bit of bumpiness in the sleeves that I'd love to smooth out the next time around. And then I was happy that my 1969 sewing machine arrived so that I could redo the invisible zipper because that is nearly impossible on an antique sewing machine without a zipper foot. So that's it. Uh, I was really happy with how it came out generally. Obviously, I need to work on my resizing and I had a chance to wear it over to the Chateau de la Lande. I didn't get any video of it moving, which was silly, but I will include a link to the Costume Industry Coalition below, and I hope somebody out there finds this helpful. Thank you.